Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to today's major markets update for Friday, March the 8th, 2024. Things start to look a bit wobbly, don't it? Uh, lots of ups and downs lately, meaning we go up, we go down, we go up, we go down, even intraday. So what exactly is going on? Let's have a look. But again, it starts to look wobbly. I don't like it. And <clears throat> uh, when was it? On Wednesday, things look good or not so good. Or Tuesday, whenever it was. And then it flipped around the next day, flipped around the other day. So again, when we're dealing with the short term, things can flip around real quick, uh, which is not always constructive for a consistent updating pattern where it might seem like you're flip-flopping around all the time. Uh, yes, we are, because the price action has been rather flip-flopping. So we must flip-flop as well. But I think we've been continuously warning for potential downside. And the warnings continue. The market internals are horrendous. Uh, the buy signals on some of these indicators we track are discombobulated. As I said yesterday, it just looks really ugly. But price is the final arbiter. However, the S&P 500 is unable so far to break above 5180 and might have a completed five-wave pattern up. And the NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 might be forming a ending diagonal. I already alluded to that earlier this week. And I think over the last three, four days, it has been more clear to me that that is a ending diagonal. And those are just extremely difficult to forecast uh, and track and trade. So, you know, take everything day by day, uh, till it, take it easy, chill out, let the market decide what it wants to do. Uh, but as I tweeted today, it um, you know we, we had the jobs numbers, but but they were pretty much just fabricated BS. Um, if we revise the jobs numbers down by thirty five percent, that I, I cannot see as a counting error. There's something else going on behind the scenes that tries to make everything look better than it is. In fact, most jobs were created once again by the government, and all the jobs that other people took were pretty much second jobs. So are things really all that great? Um, you can be the judge of it. It just looks like these numbers are meant to paint a different picture than what is truly uh, going on. And and I, I find it uh, concerning that uh, our government is now in the process of fabricating numbers. I, I cannot say anything else, but if you have a 35% adjustment, you fabricate stuff. That, that, that is to be uh, really shameful to be off by that much. And pretty much every single jobs report has been, um, for previous months, has been adjusted downwards over the last year, except I think two. Um, so in fact, it's not all that great. The thing is the headlines won't show it. Um, focuses only on the current number. But I bet you once the jobs number come out for March, this number of 275,000 will be adjusted downwards as well, possibly by uh, 100,000, who knows. So that, that is uh, concerning to me, disheartening as well. Um, I, I find it disheartening that, that everything these days seems to have a political agenda instead of simply stating the facts. Um, anyway, rent over. Let's see what we have. These are all the good things for you to take note of that can help you become better in your trading and whatnot. And always make sure to cut your losses, okay? I just got two losing trades at the end of the day. I'm all cash. I'm still up for the day, up for the week. I'm fine. Tiny losses. I'm not going to sit and wait for it. We'll see Monday again. Monday is another day. So let's go to the charts and see what we have, starting with the S&P 500 hourly chart. So we had this problem here of the drop into the 50, 60 level. Uh, I believe that was on Wednesday. Uh, she there. That was on Tuesday, right? The 5th. On 5th, we got that drop back again to the lows made late February. That was weird. And um, it was five waves lower on NASDAQ. The NASDAQ 100 uh, looked really nice and clean. If I really pull up the chart um, quickly, if I can find it, uh, let's see here. 
if I can find it quickly. There, one, two, three, four, looked really nice as five wave slow. So that was uh, even the futures market, which I don't have on the screen today, looked like five waves slower. Five waves is either an impulse or a C wave. Well, with the new highs we're making, it looked indeed like a C wave of then in this case, this case, a irregular flat. Irregular means the B wave went above the top of the A wave. Not too surprising because the wave three here in this preferred wave count did not really reach its full potential, which is normally the 161.8 at about 51.40. And we topped here at about 51.10. And then the B wave often does the trick. This price action is also discombobulated. I like the words, it's been word of the day for me every day of the week. And this looks like a, a B setup. And then we had five waves higher, also C wave. So this is the C of B, and this is the C of four. And now we completed five waves up. One, two, three, four, five. Yesterday's decline, here's a two hour decline, counts as a wave. And then today's pop higher counts as a wave. One, two, three, four, five. I'm fine with this. And then a strong decline. However, please note, we are only below the first warning level. That was it. This is the first warning level, second, third, and fourth, okay? What we can do now is, of course, raise these warning levels, but let's just keep them as is for now. We're still in this long-term uptrend. Why do I say long-term? Because this one goes all the way back here to December of last year. So we're still in this uptrend. And the trend is your friend until it bends, right? That's our ends, whatever the, the phrase is. So though we can't count five waves up, this could all be part of a larger ending diagonal. That this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, and then we still can get a push higher, okay? However, there are of course these nauseating negative divergences on the hourly chart, on the daily chart as well. This is quite concerning, however, Divergence is only divergence it's, till it's not. It's a condition, it's not a trigger, and a strong rally can completely negate it. But it must be noted, especially the money flow, as you can see, is not great. MACD is not on a buy, it's been on a sell since early March. As you can see, the MACD is having less and less strength, less momentum, and also the relative strength indicator is declining. But we need to break first below 5120. This was our first warning level. Then we need to break below Tuesday slow, which is about 5060. Then we need to break below 5040. And finally, below 4925 for me to know the top is in. Looking at the weekly chart, we can see we have five ways up one, two, three, four, five into this week's high. The alternative is that we have some sort of alt one, alt two, alt three, alt four, alt five. Okay, that's the alternative. That's why we need to see ultimately a drop, of course, below 49.13, right? That's uh, this low here, right there, right at 49.20. I'm sorry, I placed the line a little bit wrong there. There we go. That's where we need to go below. Then the top is in, then we cannot have a subdivision anymore. This cannot be a first wave, all that good stuff. And then the top is in, and we're gonna look for much lower prices, okay? Much, much lower prices, much lower. Looking at the NASDAQ 100, this was the wave count we were tracking first. It looked all weird. This is a mess and it's changed every single day. I apologize. Uh, we have five up, etc. It looks all kind of weird-ish to me. Is this then like some sort of one, two, one, two, one, two setup. So this is the one, this is two, this is one, this is two. It's possible. This is, of course, all possible, but this is also a, a messy, uh, hard to identify price structure. So again, this looks weird. We didn't have the top here. So I have troubles with the NASDAQ 100. It's fine. I cannot have all the answers all the time. The S&P 500 looks pretty good to me, unless, of course, we're going to subdivide once again. So this was on one of five, two of five, three of five, et cetera. It is still possible. We need to drop below this warning levels. But today was once again a ugly bearish reversal that causes more of this ugly, nasty, negative divergence. 
So forewarned is forearmed, but we haven't broken the ending level. So the best I can kind of come up with is that we're some sort of ending diagonal like this. And this kind of looks, in my whole opinion, the best. If I look at the regular NASDAQ, you can see here, it follows quite nicely along with the ending diagonal as well. But this was one, two, and then maybe in three. And it shows you why we need to break below these price levels to really tell us that the low is in place and that we're at least going to go to about 14,000, somewhere around there. This was the five is one relationship, which targets 16,606. Today, we got to 16,450. So it's only off by about 150 points. 150 points on 16 and a half thousand is, of course, not much. That is 0.9%, I believe. So that is accurate enough for the market to tell us that a top would be in place. But of course, we need to see these breakdowns. Okay? If we don't see the breakdowns, the market reserves the right to continue to subdivide higher. It always can. Look at cryptos. Cryptos can add a fifth of a fifth of a fifth wave. Um, I've seen it so many times. So why can the market not do that? Anyway, we're going to look now at the NASDAQ 100 weekly chart. And this was the ideal wave five target zone, as you can see, anywhere between 18,430 and 19,120. Well, we got to 18,416. So also here, technically we've done enough. Here is where we have a wave five, 0.618 times the length of wave one. Good enough to me. Negative divergence on the weekly RSI five, highest here, second highest, third lowest, right? And we start to see some negative divergence here on the weekly MACD, I believe. Let's have a look there. So yes, that is definitely a little bit of a negative divergence. It's slight, but it is there. And of course, negative divergence on the money flow, right? Going all the way back here to July of last year. So we're moving higher, less and less money flow in. That is always a concern because liquidity drives the markets. So we have potentially enough waves in place to consider the entire rally since the October low complete. If that's the case, of course, we need to break below this green wave four low at 17,300, somewhere around there, to confirm that we're at least going to around 16,000, potentially 15,500 for this wave four, and then another final wave five. Because then we have one, two, one, two, three, four, three, four, five. Okay? Would make sense. But again, that is a quite a reasonable correction of about two to two and a half thousand points. Okay? So the that is uh, nothing to mince about. It's about 15% correction. Semiconductors, very ugly reversal. Uh, the video has been trading like a penny stock. Been adding trillions every day. It seems like it, well, nothing goes up forever. And I'll show you a little excerpt of my Magnificent Seven report about NVIDIA. The forecast last week was that in the short term, we should expect more upside with a target of 940 to 1050. Okay, as long as it holds above seven or 650. So this is still a magnificent seven. I've deleted the rest of the forecast because that is only for the eyes that want to pay for this report. So 940, 1050, pretty good because the video so far has reached 974. Now, I do want to share this chart of NVIDIA. I think NVIDIA is about to enter a major four correction. If we look at previous multi-month corrections, they were on average 70%. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight previous corrections that were anywhere between 56 and 90%. Okay, on average 70%. NVIDIA is no stranger massive corrections. Giving its weighting in several of these indexes, I believe it's almost a larger company now than Apple. No, it's not. It needed to go above 1,040 to be a larger company than Apple. Then it would be the second largest company in the world. Microsoft is the largest now. And that, of course, is quite insane. Most people have never even heard of NVIDIA. It's amazing. Anyway, so please be aware of that. What that 70% correction is going to do to the markets, I don't know, but just to point it out. 
So we've reached the upside target. And now we're going to look for reversals. How are we with the IWM, small caps? Well, we're looking for it to reach 209 to potentially 214 in this ending diagonal pattern. Also here, ugly negative divergence, but divergence only divergence so it's not. We are, of course, in a strong uptrend because we're above the rising 50, rising 200 day in Ichimoku cloud. And we haven't even closed below the first warning level, which here is about 206. 204, 202, 196, right? So we can now raise those levels if we want to, but honestly, I'm just going to leave them as is, give ourselves a little wiggle room. But we did reach the ideal by five for five target zone on negative divergences, but zero signs of the top is in place. That we must have done, okay? All the thing we have done is reach the target zones. How are we doing on the Dow Jones? Well, this is wave count one that I shared with you yesterday and the day before that we have already topped for this wave C of 553 slash C. I'll show you the bigger picture count in a moment that you should be familiar with. And we are now staircasing our way lower. And these are the warning levels, of course, for the bears. And so far, the bears have been, or the bulls have been unable to break the Dow above these levels other than just intraday steps. So, so far, so good. And as you can see, the Dow is now below 20 day moving average, which I believe is at 38,788. So we are 66 points below it. Also, here, absolutely nauseating negative divergence. It's, it's just not funny anymore. So, no wonder that the Dow is kind of weak, kind of making a round top. Now, indexes barely ever have a blow off top. Indexes more have rounded top. It is most of the time commodities and cryptos that have truly a blow off top. Don't ask me why. It is, in my humble opinion, because of the fact that indexes are made up of many stocks and um, many stocks don't all top at the same time. So it takes time for the indexes to literally roll over. So bigger picture wise or not yet, this is the alternative that we're still in a expanding ending diagonal with the last C wave. It is still possible. Again, the warning levels for the bullish wave count are here and we just, Fairly close below the first warning level. And the final warning level is, of course, below the early February low, the green wave four. But again, there are technically enough waves in place to consider the rally complete. It reached 0.9% of the 39,650 target. So it's close enough. Similarly, with the NASDAQ uh, 100 as well, it's close enough for its ideal upside target. So the bigger picture wise, it's either a large ABC, right? That the B wave is about to top. Look here, nauseating negative divergence. It's really not funny anymore. It's just a condition. Uh, it's not a trigger. And this is the alternative that we are only gonna see in wave four back to about 36, 37,000. And then a final wave five to about 41, 42,000 to really kick in <laughs> insane amounts of negative divergence. Uh, that will even make your mother cry. Anyway, this is the alternative. Would look nicely this way. It would match, of course, with uh, the NASDAQ doing a four and a five as well. Let's look at market breadth. We've gone through all indexes. Still diverging um, between price and the bullish percent index of the NASDAQ composite. Still diverging for the S&P 500, as you can see, we're making uh, not a new high in bullish percentage, but also shows you how long it takes for such divergences to finally matter. And again, this is the new high, new low indicator. I showed that one already on Wednesday. Still, of course, no new high, still the potential for the early 2000 setup as we have it there. How we're doing on, doing on the McLellan oscillator, well, it's a measle 24.8, but it's positive. And as you can see, of course, we have now nauseating um, positive divergence going on, but most of the time those divergences can last a long time before they matter. So it's still positive. So the bulls are still in charge. More stocks have been advancing in the S&P 500 today than declining, but it's not by much. As such, the summation index remains on a buy. I do want to point out this negative divergence once again. That, that is what I'm really looking for, that you really have this divergence both in strength of the summation index as well as the actual 
reading of the summation. So once this one starts to roll over, it's a very good sign that the top is in place. Now, we had this cell signal here all the time, anywhere from mid-January until late February. It is what it is, right? No indicator is perfect. And we said, we've seen that before here from May into June. And once it was over, the market rallied for another month and a half, okay? So again, we've rallied now for a couple of days, two weeks. Not as long as here, but we can still move higher. Okay, We can still move higher. Things do look wobbly, but we can still move higher. We need to break below those warning levels. Let's see what we get. And this one is, of course, also very wobbly and ugly. Uh, not a clear advance at all. As I said before, this is so discombobulated. It's, it's just not funny anymore. It's it is buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, maybe. I don't know. It just doesn't look great. This doesn't look like a full of blown, let's buy it, hands full, hands down, throw everything in the kitchen sink at it, mortgage the house, sell the children, put it all in the stock market kind of signal. Quite the contrary. So this one is keeping me uh, on my toes and a little bit concerned. This is not a sign of a strong internal market. But that's what the other indicators show, of course, as well. Now we're going to look here at sentiment. Managers have allocated 94% on average of their portfolio to the stock market. It's quite high. It's definitely above the long-term average. The AAII investor sentiment of individual investors is at a whopping 51.7% bullish. Okay, That is quite high. So unusually high above its historical average for the 18th consecutive week. At some point, it will matter. Now, if it's just above its historical average, it's not that concerning, okay? What matters is how much is it above the average. It needs to be two standard deviation above the average, and highs in the 50s will certainly do it. I believe that one standard deviation is like plus or minus almost 10, something like that. So 21 to 41, yeah, it is high, but it is fit. If it's above two standard deviations, above 50, it is starting to get concerning. Same here with 1220. It was really concerning you get a pullback of some sort. So when the boat gets too lopsided, it often will swing the other way. Same with the pendulum, same with uh, a rubber band. If you keep stretching the rubber band, it will either break or it will snap back and uh, pinch your fingers. And also the fear greed indicator is still a greed. We had extreme greed a month ago, extreme greed a week ago, greed yesterday. So it's still pretty greedy. So things look frothy from a money manager perspective, individual investor perspective. And this is more a technical indicator uh, than a sentiment indicator, the CNN fear and greed index. Uh, but again, these are third level indicators, right? Price is the first one, market breadth is the second one. The sentiment is the third one. So we really always go first by price. We want to look at the other ones to say, you know, is this a sustainable rally? So is ref improving or is it kind of declining? Well, we've seen that now. It's definitely not uh, massively improving. It's kind of meh. Sentiment, on the other hand, is really whoa. From a contrarian perspective, that is a warning sign. So watch those price levels because then we know we're getting closer to a top. Last but not least, let's have a look at what other people are seeing. Their work we highly respect. Mm -hmm. uh, this was posted today by uh, Jason Apple on our friends at elliwavetrader.net. Two no more than one. So he's looking here at the S&P 500, I believe it is, yes, since um, the 1920s. And in this wave count, he shows that the 2000 um, tops here in 1990 nine or 2000, sorry, at 2007, we're exactly at the 1% extension, which is classic for a third of a third wave, right? The third of a third wave tops somewhere between the 100% and 123.6%. And all of you should know that, of course, because you have read and understood the other wave principle. See here, the third of the third wave between 100 and 1236 the third wave is anywhere between 138 and 61.8, right? That is the standard Fibonacci pattern to go by. And that's exactly what we've reached this week. 5170, and we so far, I believe we got to 5190. So on such, of course, big uh, timeframes and numbers, that is as accurate as accurate it can be.
some historical uh, reference that note from the 1932 low, five waves up into the 1968 super cycle one high, ABC flat for the super cycle two. And um, it shows that when from 1974 to 2000, the wave three or three was struck at a 1% extension, the market literally topped the day later, only 2.4% above it. So right now we went 20 points above it, divided by 50.70, that is off by 0.4%. So it, it is accurate as accurate can be. They suspect the major top is near. And this is of course the market that we've been looking for or the correction, the primary four, or sorry, super cycle four. And then there's super cycle five, okay? And as you can see, super cycle four can go all the way back to 1100 to 1500. <laughs> Not fun. And I believe it's going to end somewhere in the mid 2030s um, as it would align with uh, uh, the fourth turning ending somewhere around that time as well as shown by uh, others. Short term, our friends at the Wave Trader Net have this pivot here between 51. 53 and 5178, so close enough. Uh, so far, still an ugly reversal. Yes, again, we can go to 5350, but you know, this 1212 setup seems a little far fetched. So, again, things look wobbly. Bigger picture wise, uh, looks pretty good. If we don't stall at 5170, we can go all the way to 11,000. Wow, that'd be something. Um, don't think so. Uh, again, look at this negative divergence. It is really nauseating. The market is really losing steam, okay? That's not a good sign here as well. This is not a good sign, okay? This is not a good sign. But price is the final arbiter, and we need to see lower lows, not higher lows, not higher highs. We need to see lower lows. The low, Tuesday's low will go a long way to suggest we have topped in this quite amazing rally since the October 2023 low. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, trade safe, and I'll see you all next week.